What's up, YouTube? Reef Rookie, back at you to talk about Ick. In my last video, maybe you guys saw it, maybe you didn't, but I did mention that I wanted to talk about the three ways to quarantine fish to prevent Ick from getting into your tank. As you can see, I got my little 10-gallon quarantine tank here, and I'm going to confess, I do have a little piece of live rock in there, and I'm going to tell you not to do that in this video. The reason that live rock's in there right now is I'm not treating any medication at this point other than a little bit of Prazapro. He's in the Prazapro bath right now to... Uh, and sure against worms. Uh, you can see down the little right hand corner I have my little yellow tang in there. A little bit wimpy. He kind of just hangs there in the corner. I think he's afraid someone's going to eat him or something. But anyway, um, quarantine tank should just be bare bones, no sand, no rock, just a filter, a heater, a thermometer, and I use the Seachem badge to make sure there's no ammonia in my tank. So the method I use, and I think it's probably the most common method is to treat with copper. So before I get into that, I just want to talk a little bit about the ick life cycle. And if you understand the ick life cycle, it might make it easier to understand how you kill the ick. So when you see the white spots on a fish, that's just dead skin caused by the ick parasite. And the ick parasite that's on the fish in that stage is called a trophon. That's when he's attached to the fish, he's attacking the gills, he's burrowing into its skin, and he's really making the fish uncomfortable. Um, you'll see the fish, you might see white spots on the fish, you might see the fish scratching on the rocks. You may not see white spots on the fish. Uh, like I said, the white spots are just dead skin caused by the ick parasite. If the ick's just in his gills, you may not see anything, but you may see him scratching on the rocks. That's called the trophon stage, like I said. Okay? After the trophon stage, the ick becomes a protomont. And what happens is the protomont, the trophon falls off the fish and lands in the sand bed. He, that's a protomont. And when he sits on the sand bed for, a, I want to say, maybe a day or two, he sort of becomes an egg. He, in, he insists himself into like a uh, hard shell, so like an, like an egg stage. And that stage is called the tomont. And the tomont's like a dormant stage. He just, this guy just sits in the, in the sand bed, and people say, I think, it could last up to 72 days if this guy just sits dormant in the sand bed. And what's happening in the Tomon stage is Ick is multiplying into hundreds of little pieces of the Ick virus. And they're called Tomites. The Tomites are multiplying like crazy inside the, the Tomon stage. Okay, so after, let's say, 72 days, the Tomite... Yeah, excuse me. The, the Tomite... Ugh, if I could talk today, YouTube, I, I'm, I'm sorry. After 72 days, <clears throat> the tomont hatches, and hundreds of little tomites come flying out of there. And this is the free swimming stage of the ick virus. And the tomites, they're swimming around, they're looking for a fish to attach to. They attach to the fish, and they become trophonts again. So the, as you can see, the cycle goes around and around and around, and it doesn't stop. And it gets worse every time one of those tomites hatches. Now, the time you want to kill the ick is in the tomite stage. Okay, the tomites are the ones that get killed by the copper. Okay, so the thing you got to know about copper is it's poison to fish. Okay, um, you really have to maintain your levels precisely. You have to dose and maintain your levels. So don't do this unless you get a copper test kit. Um, I had an API copper test kit. Do yourself a favor. Don't buy the API one. It's very hard to tell the different shades of, I want to say it's like a yellow-brown color. Um, get a good quality copper test kit. Um, like I said, it's a little bit difficult because you really have to monitor the levels. I do it every 12 hours. I, I, I test the levels every 12, every 12 hours. Um, you can't have any corals, no sand, no live rock, no invertebrates. And when I say invertebrates, I mean clam, shrimp, starfish, anything like that. Anything that doesn't have a backbone, okay? Because the copper will kill those things. Okay, the live rock will just absorb the copper and it'll make the treatment kind of useless. <clears throat> so like I said, um, test your tank every 12 hours, okay, because what's going to happen is evaporation is going to increase the severity of the copper, which is going to cause the fish to stress out and it could kill them, okay. Um, Seachem advises to keep the copper levels at about 0 0.6 parts per million. The fish can tolerate that. Don't go above 0 0.8 parts per million because that's when it becomes deadly. Okay, to be safe, keep it around, keep it right at 0 0.6 parts per million. That's where the fish can tolerate it, and that's where the ick will be killed by the copper. 
And remember, it gets killed by the free swimming stage, okay, by the copper, okay. Uh, maintain this levels for two weeks, okay. Keep them in that copper bath for two weeks and make sure you keep those levels stable, okay. After the two weeks, do a pretty substantial water change and monitor the fish for another, I'd say, two to three more weeks. I do four weeks just to be on the safe side. Um, that way you can be, you can make sure that these guys these guys aren't uh, aren't coming back. So anyway, that's basically the copper treatment in a nutshell. So there's some myths I wanted to dispel about ick. Okay. First myth: all tanks have ick. Okay, that's not true. With proper quarantine procedures, you can pretty much better your chances of not having ick in your display tank. And believe me. You don't want it in your display tank because if you have to get your fish out, like I say in my other video, you gotta tear down your rock, you gotta take out your corals. It's gonna take hours to tear your tank apart, get the fish out, and then it's gonna take hours to put the tank back together. Okay. So all tanks do not have ick. Okay. Another myth I've heard is just keep the fish well fed and they'll build up a resistance to ick. Some fish may build up a resistance to the ick. Um, but the ick is just going to keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying, and no fish is going to be able to eat enough to build up a resistance once the once the ick virus or I'm excuse me, ick parasite multiplies. All you're going to have is fat fish with ick. Okay. Um, a big myth is that there's reef safe remedies for ick. Totally wrong. Okay. There's products like ick x and red ick, things like that. They may be able to kill the parasite when it's in its free swimming stage but it's not going to do anything when it's in a dormant stage and it's not going to do anything while it's attached to the fish you may see like I said the white spots may fall off the fish because all that is is dead skin and the dead skin may fall off the fish and you think up oh, my uh, riddick worked I'm good to go and you carry on a couple weeks later the ick multiplies again and before you know it you have dead fish in your tank with with ick so there's no reef safe there's no reef safe medication for ick Okay. Um, I've also heard lowering the temperature will get rid of ick. Wrong again. Okay. Marine ick is not the same as freshwater ick. Now I've heard that lowering the temperature in freshwater ick will help get rid of it. I'm not really sure about that. I'm not a freshwater fish guy, but it's a different strain of, of parasite. So lowering the temperature is not gonna not gonna do anything for marine ick. Okay. Okay. So. That's pretty much treating ick with copper in a nutshell. It's the method I use. Like I said, it is a little bit more difficult, but um, I don't have multiple tanks to do the tank transfer method, and I I'm really don't have the patience to do the hyposalinity method. Um, those two methods I'm going to cover in my next two videos, so bear with me, stick with me. Um, feel free to like, really feel free to subscribe. Um, like I said in my other videos, once I reach 100 subscribers, one lucky subscriber is going to get a free mystery gift. And it's going to be something good. It's not going to be something lame like you know you see some of these other contests. If you see something that I missed, please comment below. Like I said, I'm not a marine expert. I'm learning this as I go. And I learned from reading up on these things and I learned from watching YouTube videos. And I'm just trying to pass on the knowledge and return the favor. So, that's basically in a nutshell. This is the Reef Rookie uh, signing out. Now remember, keep those fish fat and the water clean. And quarantine every fish, no matter where you get it. Okay? I can't stress this enough. Quarantine your fish. Do not come home from the fish store and dump your fish into your display tank. Because you're going to get a parasite eventually. Alright? Reef Rookie, out.